All right, everybody, welcome back. We are back with the HP Z640 Xeon station. Last video, we did some pretty crazy stuff. Well, if you consider that crazy, we put a 3070 Ti in here, and we also put a card reader installed, and we got it to game, and it went pretty well, pretty successfully. Now what we are going to do is install a E52699A V4. This is 22 cores. Replacing the 14 core that we have in the system now. Can't wait to get this thing started. We're going to redo the benchmarks. I think this has, this has 55 megabytes of cache. That has 35. I want to see if there's going to be any benefit to that. And we're also going to be replacing the video card. This was a pretty sweet find. It's a Dell 3080 Ti. I'm going to be using this to replace my 3070 Ti in the system and see uh, if there's any benefits there. And we're going to, once again, run through the gaming benchmarks and have some fun. So first, let's get uh, the processor swapped out and this graphics card out of here. Okay, so my camera died yesterday while I was installing everything, but we got everything taken care of. This, uh, we got the 3080 Ti in there. I do like the little white GeForce RTX logo in there. It's pretty funny that this is a HP system and I'm throwing a Dell OEM card in there. Uh, so far things are up to good. I didn't have to install a new version of Windows, thank God I was worried about that. Uh, let's check out the temps, make sure everything's working right. So far, so good. We're running Y Quencher here. Uh, so far, you know, temps are well within order. I think we're hitting the TDP limit before we even get close to uh, thermal throttling here. All the cores look good under 50. Obviously, if I run this for a bit, it'll hit up to about 55, 54. But uh, so far, looking pretty good. And we beat our previous Y Quencher score by about 10 seconds, which is pretty cool. 
Although I don't know if that's worth it given that we have eight more cores, but teach their own. The testing continues. In the meantime, I also decided to upgrade the storage. I only have it, like I said, from the last video, that one terabyte SSD fills up pretty fast when you're doing games. So I dug out two of my old uh, Crucial BX500. They're only 480 gigs each, but if I put them in RAID 0, I'll get almost close to a terabyte. Um, we only have one slot up here for the hot swap. So I have once again gotten another uh, hot swap bay for these two SSDs. We're gonna put in this final bay up front. I'll show you guys how that looks when I'm done and then uh, eventually we'll re-download some games and we'll get back to gaming on this thing. Okay, we got the SATA wired up all here. It's starting to look like a mess of cables, but you know what? Somehow we're making it work. We're gonna go ahead and take our two SSDs now that we've mounted it up front. All it requires is we just slide them in, like so. I don't know if I did that one correctly. Feels wrong, but you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and say we did it, and then we're gonna power it on, make sure we get those drives red. Okay, I plan on using the built-in RAID uh, configurator on this motherboard, but for right now we're just using Windows. Looks like it went through, it's just gonna take forever to format. Once it's done, we'll get some games installed and we'll start running it back like we did the last video. All right, once again, we've swapped our main rig out for again the server. I'm gonna say I really like how industrial this is starting to come. We got all these bays going at once, you know. It's right next to the Plex server. It's looking pretty sweet. Uh, let's get some games and tests going. So here we are with the finals. Uh, we're doing better than the last time we had this thing with the 3070. We were hitting about 70, 80 FPS. Now we're hitting about 90, 100 FPS lows within the 70s, 75, 80s. Very playable here and still able to have some funny moments. I'm fucking goo. <laughs> Ready, look up. Uh, yeah, you need to hold up. Maybe this will help. Oh, it did, actually. Wait. No, it didn't. Uh, how about this? <laughs> really? That's... And knock me over, too? Like, I can't, I can't get up! And here we are with Halo uh, Infinite. We're doing pretty uh, good here performance-wise. We're getting anywhere between 140 to 170 FPS with lows in the... Uh, 110, 115 mark, and uh, it's a pretty smooth play here. Unfortunately, I did go off on a rant about how I hate 343, so I apologize about that. If I had MCC fully downloaded, I'd be down to play that. My autistic ass needs to just let this game go. It's fun. But, like, it's really not. <laughs> nah, I've, no, dude, I've, I've literally watched this game go from being the greatest of all time to below, well below mid. Just wipe. I've watched the whole thing from its creation to downfall, it hurts. Here you can see me running for my life in Helldivers 2. With testing this one, this was strange. So in my original build with the 3070 Ti, we were getting 90s, uh, 90s, 95 FPS range, lows 70s. With this configuration with a 3080 Ti, we're getting lows in the 60s and uh, the highest FPS we're getting is in the 80s. So weird dip there, I might have to come back and do like a smaller video where I do some testing. but. Uh, Still ran pretty smooth and playable. The dips in the ship were also gone in the beginning of the map, so a lot better of an improvement there at least. And of course, I still have to keep my stream schedule going once again, so it runs pretty fine when I'm streaming games like Halo, Helldivers, the finals. Like I said, just like last time, about a 5% uh, FPS loss. Here you can see we're goofing off and lethal and things are running pretty smooth. Look at this. I, Shadow, I brought you all the way over it? here to give you this. What is it? 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 I don't know. That's for you. Happy birthday. A bottle. No, no, no. Not just any bottle. Everything's white. Going back to a more bland stress test, it's Cinebench R23 once again. After running it a couple times, I get around 17,640, 17,700, uh, which is about a couple thousand points lower than my 7,700X. So pretty impressive, I guess, but it is 22 cores, so take that into consideration. And even though it's not going to be a valid result because 3D Mark doesn't recognize my processor, 
We're going to end it out with the score here. It's about a couple thousand higher than my older configuration, so I'm pretty satisfied. Thanks for watching, everybody, and I'll see you in the next one. Stay tuned. We're going to keep up with the upgrades.